This is the new user guide for the NVIDIA Shield system. You go ahead and unpack everything from your box here. You will have everything you need except for an HDMI cord, which you'll have to provide your own. You can plug all of this in, including the small USB receiver that comes in the white box with the remote. That needs to be plugged into the NVIDIA Shield system itself so that the remote can work wirelessly with it. Alright, so first thing we're going to do is get a controller paired if you need that. You're going to go to the top right gear and then down to remotes and accessories. Then to add Bluetooth accessories. Put your controller in pairing mode. See it pop up on the list and we're going to select it. And sometimes it'll ask you to pair. Go ahead and hit pair. Now it's paired up. We're going to connect to the Wi-Fi now. If you don't have Wi-Fi, or you want to connect wired, that's fine as well. You don't need to be connected to the internet, and it just uh, helps you run some of the uh, non-retro applications. All right, let's get into the games with RetroArch. It's gonna have most of your systems on it. First thing we're gonna do is set up the hotkeys. Go to settings, input, then down to hotkeys. And we're going to map our menu toggle, which lets you open the menu while you're in game. I'm going to choose start for that one, holding it, then fast forward and rewind. And then the save and load features. There's obviously other stuff here you can map, but these are some of the important ones. All right, once you have all of these mapped, we're going to go back and into the game. We're going to use some of them. I'll open up Aladdin here. And we can use the fast forward feature in the top right. You see those two arrows, that speeds up the emulator. Obviously some of this is with the video editing I'm doing. So it's running right now. Uh, the save and load you can use to move forward and back into a point. The rewind feature I'm gonna use right now. You can run back, very useful when you make small screw ups, kind of cheating. So obviously if you don't wanna do that, just don't. I'm gonna do it here cause I don't care. Uh, and then the save and load features will obviously bring you to certain points. You should use the in-game save as well. I'm going to hold down start here, open up this menu, and back out. And those hotkeys will work across the board for all the emulators that RetroArch plays. We're going to open up Dolphin now. Dolphin's going to be our GameCube games. First thing we're going to do is get the controller configured. So I already have it configured. If you do not, obviously setting it up here, yours should come configured, but if you have a different one, go ahead and configure it now. This is where you're gonna find your games. You go to the folders here. I know where my games are at. Up three tabs and then to the 3237 folder and then you just hit select directory and that will populate your games. Again, yours should already be populated so you can just hit the refresh library tab like I did there and they will show up open up. I'm not going to run Budokai even though it's a great game because uh, i got a lot of other things to cover here. So we're going to open up the Drastic DS emulator. They just updated this. It runs great now. First thing we're going to do is set some of these hotkeys up. Now you can map your controller here. Yours should come mapped. You can choose which controller you want. I'm choosing the Xbox 360. I already have it mapped so I'm not going to do map controller. I will open the hotkeys. We've got fast forward again, the menu of course, and then uh, pointer down, which uh, allows you to press the button like you're uh, touching the screen. All right, so we'll open up Mario here. It sort of confuses you, so you do need to use your right thumbstick and press these right pointers down. I'm speeding through some of this really quick. It's just regular gameplay. I'm nothing special about it. Uh, the save and other hotkey features work exactly the same as the other games, so just knowing how to access them is what's important, not really using them in everyone. So 
Gonna move on to the PlayStation emulator. It is in the EPSXE application. We're gonna go straight into it. The configurations were just there uh, for players one through four. Just set your player one. Obviously, you don't have to do it right now, but uh, because they're done for you, but you can uh, do it for a new controller. And then there's the hotkeys here. Load and save again. Uh, don't think the PlayStation has the speed up feature, even if it did, it does, but um, in these uh, more difficult to emulate systems, it's not going to speed it up as much because you can only speed it up to the maximum power of the system, and the system is not like wildly overpowered for PlayStation and GameCube. But still works, I'll use it some here. I'm not really going to play much of this Castlevania great game, Symphony of the Night, but. Uh, again, we've got a lot to do. It does speed up the clouds. We'll head over to Yaba Sanshiro, which is the Sega Saturn emulator. Do need an emulator just for this system. Alright, so we've got the gamepad there and the map feature. Both of those you can use just like the other systems to map your controller up. It will come mapped, but if you have another one. Uh, this is how you add the games. I'm showing you where the folder is. Same place as all the other folders are. You navigate to it the same way. For this one, you do have to scroll through all the games, which is annoying. You select it, hit OK, press B. It'll populate the list of games. Not even going to open a game for this one. Don't need to. We're going to move right on to how to add games to the system. Just in case you have some that you didn't get, or maybe you got some games you don't want, and you can swap them out. So I'm going to choose three games here. This is on my computer. I'm going to copy them. I've got my hard drive plugged into my computer. Uh, so I'm going to access that. Show it right there. Choose the GameCube folder. And I can paste it in. Or I can screw up and not have deleted games first. So I'm going to delete these. Quickly empty the recycle bin. And then I will paste in the new games. Speed this process up a lot. And then these games are paste it in, I'll go back and refresh that list again on the GameCube games in the Dolphin emulator. It will populate the list and I'll open up Gauntlet Dark Legacy. Freaking classic. I'm gonna shoot right through this. This is not the speed up feature in game. This is me video editing like a boss and we're straight into it. Running at pretty good frames. Sound is good though I don't think I'll have it on for you. Um, firing bolts, just like no problem, collecting crystals, running great, and it's very easy to add games. The GameCube games won't all run perfect, they are at the limits of the system, so the ones we have run good, if you start to add your own, or you got some added, no guarantees there, uh, it is the most difficult system to emulate. 